All right, this morning, a little after 11 o'clock, Officer Paul Sula, assigned to the 24th District, was on patrol uh, with his partner. They were in the area of G and Madison. Uh, they looked down G Street and they saw two males crouching down behind cars, one of whom they could see had a gun. Um, the second male may have had one, but they knew one did for sure. They exited their car and approached the males. One of the males then turned towards the officers and, and discharged his weapon, striking Officer Sulak in his right leg. Uh, right now, we know that Officer Sulak is in stable condition. Uh, he's in good spirits. We know that he has a uh, gunshot wound to his right thigh, and there's possibly some fragments in his calf. Uh, he is uh, 31 years old. Uh, he's uh, about a 10-year veteran of the force, uh, and he's a father of four. So we, we are very fortunate right now, uh, given those circumstances. I mean, essentially, they almost, for, we know they interrupted um, what was probably a shooting. Uh, we also believe that uh, after he was shot, that Officer Sula actually chased one of these males and apprehended him. And uh, the second male has been subsequently apprehended by uh, other police officers in the area. Uh, both have been positively identified at this time. Uh, we don't have a lot more to go on other than the fact that we know that he's going to be okay. Those males were not struck by gunfire by police, though police did discharge. Uh, both officers discharged their firearms, uh, returning fire, uh, but the suspects were not hit. Uh, the quick police action of both these two officers probably saved the life of even one of the people involved, to be quite frankly, because it was, it was going to be a, a, a shooting. There was no question about that that they interrupted. Uh, so fortunately, he's going to be okay. His family is here. His father is a police officer as well. Uh, and so I'll just turn it over to the mayor right now, and then if the DA has something after that. Well, Commissioner, gave you all the facts. We're just thank, we thank God that he's okay. Uh, we had a chance to go in and, and talk to him, and he's in good spirits, and uh, he's a strong young man, and uh, his family's there with him. And we're there for him and his family, whatever they need. And we thank God that this turned out the way it did. So thank you. We are here to support this truly heroic officer who not only survived the incident but was able to chase down and apprehend one of the two suspects on the spot while he was injured. We want you to know that the district attorney's office is taking this case extremely seriously. It will be assigned to our new unit that does a combination of homicides and shooting matters, and we'll make sure we have nothing but the finest attorneys developing the information, developing the investigation, and prosecuting this case. Thank you. So, if you have any questions, we'll take them right now. So they were going to shoot somebody. Well, I mean, by all indications, when they turned down the street, uh, they were both crouching behind cars, one of whom had a gun in his hand. And so that's a strong indicator that uh, he was about to discharge at that other male, and possibly that that other male may have been uh, prepared to do the same. Uh, we're just not 100% certain that the second male had a gun, but uh, that's what we believe at this time. So we'll have to wait and see. But we know at least one did, and he was apprehended along with the second person. Were you able to ascertain who they might have been targeting that was interrupted? Well, they, it looks like they were targeting each other, to be perfectly honest with you, because they, when I say crouched behind cars, it was across the street from each other. And so it is very likely that uh, the one male who we know is the, the one who shot the officer was going to shoot that second male. Uh, again, whether that second male was in a position to shoot that other guy, I don't, we don't know at this time. And so we'll start our investigation, and, and we'll see what we can get from this, uh, and we'll be able to figure out, hopefully, what this was all about from the outset. But we know a police officer was shot, uh, doing his job, uh, doing it bravely, uh, and then subsequently uh, chasing down the person who shot him, uh, which is uh, no doubt uh, valor to his highest degree, and uh, we're just thankful that he's okay. Well, he chased one of the males involved. So we're trying to figure all that out, to be perfectly honest with you. And you know, when you when you're trying to piece this together, talking to an officer over the phone and one at the scene, you know, you can't be 100% certain that you have the exact parties. But we do know we have the right two individuals in custody. Earlier, they were saying there was a standoff situation. Was there ever standoff between the officers? Now, this unfolded in seconds. I mean, so when you say standoff, that kind of suggests that's something that's more prolonged. So I wouldn't call it a standoff. And how did the officer get here? Was he taken to the police car uh, by his partner? Uh, I believe he was taken not by his partner, but by another police officer. Okay. Were both of the two guys armed or just one? 
That's what I'm trying to say. We're trying to ascertain that. Um, you know, there's some initial thoughts that they may have both been armed, but we're not 100 percent certain. We obviously know at least one of them was because the officer saw a gun in, in one of the uh, individual's hands, and that's the one who shot the police officer. So while all that was the point I was making. I mean, they no doubt interrupted um, a shooting. Uh, we have every indication, uh, given what we deal with each and every day, that that's what was going to happen. And so they probably saved the life of the guy who ended up shooting him. And that's ironic. Were the officers in Oh, they're, they're in uniform. They're in uniform. Well, they, they are. I had just been walking. I just passed them walking in that neighborhood literally like five minutes before. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful that he's in such good spirits that he was joking with me about, yeah, you caught me putting my tie on in the car. So, but that's a good thing when he's able to say, you know, I just saw you, you just passed me, and you caught me without my tie on. And so, uh, or at least fixing his tie. And, 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 you know, you just hope that people are able to quit like that under some traumatic uh, circumstances and events like this, you know? Because uh, obviously in the grand scheme of things, I don't care about the tie right now, you know? and. Uh, but, you know, we literally had just walked past it. Sula. So let me make sure I get this right. S-U-L-L-O-C-K. And again, he's O-C-K. And actually, he came on in 07, so he's coming up on 11 years. Right. What, what time does this all happen? A little after 11. So I believe it's 11.09 to be exact. But uh, that's where we are. Anybody else? Can you get his first name, please, Mr. Officer? Yeah. Paul. Paul. So. I don't think so. Anybody else? Thank you so much. All right.